Hi guys and a very Merry Christmas to you. Welcome once again to me, Fisher Rob and the Novice Angler. Well, I thought I'd pop a quick uh, little Christmas video out for you guys <clears throat> in the run up to Christmas. For all you fishermen that are avidly out there in that cold blah, 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 weather, um, frosty mornings and uh, carp that are sitting there quietly doing absolutely nothing. So we've got to try and tempt them out into the open um, or at least away from their little swims. So uh, I thought I'd pop a, a quick uh, video on about some baits. Now, as you know, I'm a great advocate of Calder and Guru products um, and this one is going to be mentioning some of the Gorda fake bait ranges. This one's a dumbbell, it's a pop-up. Um, these are very good for um, your uh, fishing straight away in uh, close to the banks. Um, if you've got out uh, into a nice swim, um, the pop-up dumbbells are a nice shape for a good mid-range to heavy uh, carp. So uh, do think about those um, dumbbell pop-ups. Um, this particular one here um, is the Bonoffi flavour, very popular with carp. They do go for a lot of tutti fruities and things like that, pineapple, um, similar to the barbel, barbel like pineapple as well. Um, but um, So have a look at the, the fruity flavours when you're going for your um, fake baits. Um, now there's quite a range out there. Uh, we have bread, I'm sure we can see that, and uh, you know, different sizes, simply uh, just a bit of fake bread, great for floating on the surface and uh, attracting them off the surface, uh, what we used to call mugging. But um, during winter months, it's somewhat harder to get those carp out there. They're quite often keeping together in their own little shoals, um, tucked away in reed beds, uh, close to the roots of trees, overhanging branches, brambles near islands, things like that. So if you've got an island feature in your lake, you think about catching the fish right there. Um, they don't often move very far, um, simply it's just too cold. Um, you'll find them mid-range water, probably nearer the surface, um, just to try and get those few rays of sunshine to warm the water up a few degrees. Um, so always useful with that um, to know those sort of spots. But as I say, there are a whole different range of uh, feet or fake baits. Um, that's another one. It's another Bonoffi. That's in white, the dumbbell. Um, popular one for catching them on the surface is uh, a dog biscuit sort of imitation. Um, quite a simple thing. You can either pop um, a plug into the bottom of that, a little bit of cork, keep it near the surface, but they're fairly buoyant themselves just for casting out and letting them float on the surface with the other dog biscuit. Um, they have a slight... I'm not sure if you'll see that on camera, but there's a slight dimple on the top of that. Um, that's very useful for just popping your hook into that and turning it back so that it's just purely the hook is hanging out the end and uh, you've got most of the shank buried inside the actual dog biscuit imitation there. Um, so as soon as they take that, they're almost jumping onto the hook. So that's a good way of taking them from the surface. Now Corda and uh, there's another one, who's the other big one? Uh, Enterprise, Enterprise Tackle do a lot of fake baits in various colours and ranges. Um, there's another little selection for you there. Uh, you have the yellow typical sweet corn. Uh, you have the same again in uh, maize, they do it in a pink maize uh, piece. And um, it doesn't want to stay on my hand, but uh, they do that in that and then they do these ones as well which are a sort of a equivalent to a sweet corn but in pink um, and these are either slow sinkers or pop-ups again so uh, very very good for um, just having the hooks just sitting a little bit off the bottom if you're fishing close in um, and uh, you can just get your bank uh, shape when you've been casting out and getting your exact spot where you want to cast to for fishing um, and you'll find the banks start to curve up a little bit more shallow towards the reed beds and say roots of islands and things so um, it's useful just to uh, fish a little pop up a couple of feet up off the bottom there and uh, they'll be just on the angle of the bank where a lot of food settles as it comes off the island or is washed off during rain um, and things like that so you can fish just a, a few feet down from the surface right in the uh, area of the carp swim 
Now another one for the surface and for bottom, depending on how you're going to want to fish it, is of course the imitation pellet. These are very squeezy, a bit, a bit spongy-like, but um, very, very good for a carp. And uh, they do seem to go for these very, very well. Um, another big one for you would be halibut pellet. Halibut pellet is another very good one for carp, and they come in various sizes. Now, I have no idea why they go for the black ones, but the carp go bonkers for black um, fake baits. Uh, whether it's in relation to um, hemp seed, um, which is obviously black but much, much smaller, uh, I don't know. But uh, either way, there's your black sort of sweet corn shape there, and uh, they just seem to go bonkers for that. So, what else can we give you besides a whole range of different coloured baits? Well, of course, Corda do a great selection of the goo. Now, this goo are, again, in various flavours, krill, crab, caramel, banoffee, you name it. Um, there's, oof, I don't know, I think my local one um, down at uh, Clenatley has got something like 26 different flavours. So, <laughs> uh, go along there. Be quite sparingly with it. These are about £11 a bottle. So uh, they're not exactly cheap, but very, very good quality. Um, and they are absolutely gorgeous. I mean, when, oof, take this off. Oh, gorgeous. Um, almost edible, uh, though don't do it. <laughs> but it's tempting. Um, they do a whole range of these uh, goos. Um, and they're quite a thick mix, actually. I don't know if you might be able to see it I on the camera. I'll try and blob a little finger all glued onto there. There it is. So a bit like a little toffee in this case caramel goo so let's see if I can well, do it right here we go here we go here we go can I get it I love it I love it I love it yeah I did most of it yeah, look at that not too bad um but uh, yeah the uh, caramel um isn't cheap as I say but they're absolutely fabulous um if uh, you go out onto the uh, riverbank you know whatever lakeside so forth um, have a good selection of these oh, two or three four whatever um the i'm trying to think they call it now something corn i can't think what they call it power corn or something um very very good one much much uh generating in its uh flavoring or scent of the corn very very good for that um, this is caramel, as I say, um, banoffee, um, the crab, they do like crab, um, krill, they go very well for krill. Um, you can actually get that in the cordagoo, or you can get uh, about a half gallon tub of krill flavouring, and you can just use that as an additive in your foodstuffs throughout the winter. Um, but corn, obviously, sweet corn, um, I have promoted another one on one of my bait videos, I think just on my Facebook page, I haven't done a YouTube channel about that, I must do that for you guys. Um, but that's um, Kokanee Corn Dye, I believe they call it. It's like a, a pink salt that you can buy from the States through Amazon. Again, about 10 or 11 pounds. Um, similar in size, I suppose. Yeah, it's got to be pretty similar in size. Bit of a little bit wider. Um, and all you basically do is find yourself a nice container, usually a glass jar, like a seal jar, you can clip down, um, pop two or three tins of uh, sweet corn, normal sweet corn in there. Um, you can get them for about 30 or 40 pence from your local store, I'm sure. Uh, and add a couple of teaspoons of this salt to it. It's Kokanee corn dye, and it's K O K A N double -E, -E, I think Kokanee corn dye, corn with a K as well, not with a C. Um, and um, give that about 30 minutes, give it a good shake up, etc., swirl it around. You leave it about 30 minutes and it will actually cure your corn and it will turn it a vivid pink. It will be very similar to these pieces. Dyes, it goes from that, you know, to a very, very solid pink colour. Very, very rich. Um, you can mix that with your baits, etc., that you squeeze around method feeders or whatever, or maybe just a, a ball of bait, of mixed bait you throw out to feed the swim, spot it with, whatever. Um, but keep a few back so that the bait that's actually on the hook matches that in your ground bait that you're feeding the swim with. Um, and then you'll find that uh, they get used to picking up those sort of colours out of the bottom and uh, they'll just come along and pick yours up without even thinking about it and uh, then hopefully bang, you've got them on the hook. So kokanee corn dye. But a last little thing for you, um, I'm sure you've seen one of these before. This is the Corda Thinking Tackle um, uh, 
boiler grinder you see these sort of things um, you can use pellet you can use boilies and you just put a few in here I know eight ten of those push it down you can see there's lots of spikes in and the tops of those are pretty sharp push it together and just grind it together and check it out okay not quite enough do it again and then lovely nice smooth powder to add into your ground bait now if you have um, some good boilies some good quality boilies from your fishing shops um, that are more designed for the rising sort of semi pop-ups or whatever like that put a few of those in and grind those up and then mix them with your ground bait um, and I'll tell you why basically you find carp fishing at different levels not so much during the winter they tend to be in a fixed area but um, they still will move around as a shoal but not very far um, but if you can find some pop-up type boilies and you can grind them up in the corder grinder there then you will find you can add that to your ground bait and as your ground bait disperses and breaks down on the bottom of the river or lake you will find that there's a good steady stream of these pieces of ground um, pop-ups going up through the water and if they are fishing at a slightly higher level in the lake you can pull them down to where you are or where your feed is set up so do think about that this is why called to have this little tag thinking tackle and it's very very true it some of the stuff they come out with really does make you think, you think yeah you know that's a possibility that might work so very very good tag for that company um, but yeah so when you're making your ground baits up or the balls of food that you're going to throw out and feed the area with do think of a few boilies that you can grind up there with the quarter grinder and uh, mix it with the ground bait so a little short and sharp uh, message for you today enjoy your fishing enjoy the winter time and of course merry christmas from me fisher thanks a lot